Hey, how's it going everyone? Codebird29 is back with a brand new video. Today we're doing part 6 to our beginner scripting series. Today we're talking all about tables. Now this is an episode I left out of last year's scripting, beginner scripting series, and I totally should have added it in here, so this is a lesson that you're not going to want to miss. Alright, so first off, what are tables? So tables are a like a giant, they're kind of like variables in a way that they hold data, but they are able to hold multiple pieces of data. So, for example, a table could not only hold the number two, that's how much a variable can hold, one thing, right? But a table could hold the number two, the string hello, the bool true, it could hold a ton of stuff. And yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's insert a script into server script service to start. And I'm going to call this script tables, tables script. Now I'm going to get rid of the print hello world and we're going to write our first table. So to write a table, you always start with local when you first write it out, just like a variable, and then you name your table. So let's call this local my table. Next, you're going to set it equal to a table. And I'm going to zoom in real quick um, so you can see it's these squiggly brackets. That is what defines a table. Next, whatever is in here is stored inside of the table. And you separate each item by a comma. So let me show you something real quick. We can have 5, 3, 2, 5, 5, 2. We can have whatever we want. This is just a random example. And these are all different items that are now stored inside of my table. Okay, So tables are able to hold these items and it can hold as many as you want and they're always separated by a comma. Okay, so let's go ahead and try something with my table. Let's go ahead and get rid of this real quick. And let's make a string. We'll call this CodeBear29 for mine because it's my YouTube channel. Feel free to do whatever you want in yours. And then I'll do 7900. That's how many subscribers I currently have. And I'll say true because I, it is true. I am still post on my channel. So I'm going to rename this to my YouTube table. Okay. So now I have this. This is my table. And each spot, each item in my table has a different index. So an index is the spot in the table that it's located on. A lot of languages start at zero, but Roblox starts at one. Lua starts at one with their tables. Um, so this right here is spot one in the table. This is spot two, this is spot three, etc. Okay. So what we can actually do is we can say print my table, my YouTube table. Actually, let's start with that. Let's just print my YouTube table. I'll hit play or you can run it. As you can see, it's printed this little thing with squiggly brackets and a little drop down arrow. And if you click the drop down arrow, you can see it has printed our table. Okay, so that's working. Now, what we can do is we can print specific items in our table. So for example, what if I just wanted to print my channel name? I could say print my YouTube table. And then you can do square brackets, and inside of these square brackets, what you can do is you can say the index. So if I wanted to print my channel, it would be 1, because my channel is at the first spot of my, uh, my table. So I'll hit play again, and as you can see, it printed code row 29. So that is how that works, and you can change this to 2 or 3 or however many items are in your table. And uh, that is how you can find specific items in your table. Now we're going to talk about a couple other functions in tables. We're going to talk about table.insert, table.remove, and we're going to also touch on table.find. So what we can do is we can say table.insert my YouTube table, comma, Lua. Okay, so Lua, if you don't know, I think I said this at one point, but Lua is the scripting language of Roblox. And what this is saying is we are going to insert into this table. So when you write table.insert, it's going to insert something into a table. The first thing you specify is what table you're going to insert into. For this, it's my YouTube table. And then we add a comma and whatever we want to add to it. When you use table.insert, you put it, it, it adds it to the last spot in the table. Okay, so let's go ahead and now after we've done that, we can print my YouTube table. Now let's just hit run, and as you can see, if we drop down this table, we have our old stuff, but we also have in slot 4, Lua. Perfect. So that's table.insert. Now, what if we wanted Lua 
to not be at the end of the table, but we want it to be somewhere in the middle. Well, what we can do is we can add another comma right here, and in between the table and what you want to add, you can specify the index. Let's say I wanted to put Lua at the second spot at the table, so right after Code Bear 29 and right before 7900. So right in between here, I want to add Lua. Well, if we do that, it's going to do exactly that. It's whatever number you put between the table and whatever you want to add is going to be the spot. As you can see, 2 is now Lua. All right, so that works perfectly. Next, let's talk about table.remove. So table.remove, you can probably guess, it removes an item from a table. So let's go ahead and write table.remove, my YouTube table, and now you're going to realize something. The thing is, you cannot just write whatever you want it to remove right here. You have to write the index, okay? So if we wanted to remove code 29, we would write table.remove, my YouTube table, comma, one. If we wanted to remove Lua because this is later on uh, in the script, we can say two because Lua is now the second spot in the table. But let's remove Code Row 29 from it and now print my YouTube table. We can drop down the second table and as you can see my channel name is gone. So that is what remove does. So last thing we're going to talk about is table.find. And table.find is really helpful if you are going to, if you want to remove something from a table or um, just see if something is in the table, but you don't know what index it's at. So let's just say I had this and I didn't know if 7,900 was in the second spot. Because as you can see right here, we replace it, or we put Lua at the second spot. So maybe I thought that 7,900 was still at the second spot. What we can do is we can print table, actually instead of doing that, we'll say if, we're going to use an if statement, table.find, okay, and we'll say the table, my YouTube table, comma, and then 7,900, then, and now what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if that we it's going to basically look through our table and find see if it can find 7900 and if we print then table.find my youtube channel comma 7900 it's going to print well actually i'm just going to let you see we're going to run it and as you can see it's printed 2 why is that because 7900 was at the second spot because we removed code bar 29 it was back at the seventh uh, second spot so table.find, if you store that in a variable or print it directly like this, it's going to uh, give you the index that it's at. So this is what we can use it for. This is really cool right here. Um, if we want to remove, let's say we wanted to remove 7,900 from the table. So I'm going to get rid of this real quick. I'll just comment it out. I'm not sure if I've talked about that yet, but um, if you do two dashes before a line or to do a multi-line comment, it is dash dash square bracket square bracket and then you do two closing square brackets when you're done basically that'll just tell the script to ignore this part okay it's called a comment so what we can do is we can say if table.find my youtube table 7900 so if we found that in our table we can say table.remove my youtube table comma table dot find my YouTube table, comma, 7,900. So it may seem like a lot, but I'm going to go through it real quick. We're basically saying table.remove, so we're going to remove something in the table, and it's going to be an index. So we're going to remove from my YouTube table whatever index we find. So we're going to remove the index that we, that we get when we find 7,900 from my YouTube table. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. Uh, like the other videos, it takes practice. So as you can see, actually we're not going to be able to see anything. We've got to print the table after we've done that. So we can say print my YouTube table. Now let's run this. And if we open up this, we can see that we no longer have 7,900. 7, it was removed. In the next video, we'll be talking about loops. So this is going to, um, we're going to be able to loop through the table. So I'm excited for that. Um, but that was it on tables. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Also leave a like on the video if you found it helpful so that other people can see it. And uh, if the next video is out, it'll be up on your screen. If not, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It'll be replaced by some other video. It'll be coming out in a week or so, so stay tuned, and I'll see you then.